and sunglasses are supposed to take him off. Through that extremely soft, yeah, no, I couldn't think of it. Yeah, hit him perfectly right in the sunglasses. <laughs> Went flying and then he grabbed him. He ended up being teacher of the year. Come on. No lie. Seriously. Okay, it was trouble, man. Oh, my gosh. We're being recorded right now. That's awesome. I was going to say we should have got him it does never get the tension from Bruce Trouble. Yeah, yeah, I get it too, and then if they wanted to see anything, it's like, there you go. His classroom or? Play stuff, because he was the director for the play. So he picked you to get a detention so he could get some help. Kind of chill. I mean, because that was a nice kid. You know I'd do it, so. Well, we need more. These two are in the meeting back here, and Nicole's, or Nicole, Nicole and Brittany, I think, are meeting with Tracy Tony. Oh. So they're, no. they're right here, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Aren't they meeting with? Can you want to just check and see? Because we got to get started. Yeah. I'm almost getting nervous. I was like, okay, we're down to four. Yeah. David promised me we had a quorum. I did. I promised Amy we had a quorum. Amy would have come, but she was sick. Yeah. Well, then Micah said he's freezing. Got the chills today. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, like a lot of one part of that. Yeah. Should I still come, David? David, going, just if you're not feeling good, just let the bat a bit like. Uh, no. Well, that's what I'm always saying at work. You know, we have to screen people. I'm like, you feeling good today? No fever, chills, nausea, vomiting? Because everybody sees me as short of breath. And yeah, for sure. Hey. Well, hey, troops. Should I just oh, oh. Right It's already started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 you. I don't know where she put it. Yeah. David, if you want to say good morning, are you going to have Nicole read the resolutions? Yeah. Who do you want to? I can just read them. I'll just read them. You want to just read them? Sure. I you do it. And you can by yourself. Okay. It's a one stop shop there is. You don't have your Laura. Well, we shouldn't have to read every one. Look at the box. Oh, I'm not going to do that. We'll call this meeting to order. Please rise with the national pledge of allegiance. And then we're going to sing Norn. We won't sing the national pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I guess speakers have to sing the national anthem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry about that, I get confused. All right, um, roll call. We have um, Mike. Uh, Laura and Amy are absent, and then we also have uh, Jen Nowak and Chase Johansson. Here tonight, two reports, and of course, All right, agenda. I have a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Oh, go ahead, Nicole. I'll second it. Motion to Nicole, second by Lindsay. Discussion needs. Well, the only thing is, we you know we had to make some changes today for uh, uh, conversations Friday, but that all got changed uh, here earlier today, so we should be good. So your okay. way you see it is correct. Good. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Public comments and rebel recognition. Got a few things. Uh, yeah, we do. Rebel recognition. Rebel recognition. Uh, robotics. Uh, Katie Oman today, our activities director, shared this with me. The robotics team spent Tuesday through Sunday in Texas, actually Houston, Texas, and had many matches. They received third place for the Connect Award, which is given to the team that most connects with their local STEM community. They ended the competition with a rank of 39 out of 56, while some of the teams that competed were from the United States, while other teams were from all over the world. So, great experience. I did talk to Joe O'Keefe. He came back too, so that was good. <laughs> Nobody's got to check, uh, but he said it was a great experience. The kids really enjoyed it, so that was good. So that's that. Um, um, speech. Uh, just wanted to. Kathy Martin said, "Dear teachers and staff, one more trip to the speech uh, to the speech season. The following students have qualified for state. So this was before last week. So I'm going to read both. Then we also have some results from state." Uh, these students qualified for state, Ryan, uh, Rylan Knudsen, Aubrey uh, Lambert, Nora Jones, Abby Jones, Shannon, and Isaac Gifford. Overall, the team placed second at sections. Please congratulate them. 
Um, and then, please congratulate Rylan Knudsen, who placed fourth at state in a very difficult category of extemporaneous speaking. So congratulations awesome. to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. Extemp speaking, that's where you, they give you like three topics to, from the news, and it's something like, you know, discuss the war in Chad or something like oh, that. Wow. And then you go through and you put oh, yeah. all your resources and then you give a speech on it. 30 minutes, so it's, wow. Wow. it is uh, difficult. It, that's what she's not lying when she says a very difficult category. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of serious individuals that go in the <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, congratulations to Ryan. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. So, yes. He's, a, he's a freshman too, so. Yeah, very oh, wow. young, yes, he is. Uh, Three claps, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. 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 Kudos awesome. Him. So that's what I got from, I don't know if you have anything else from anybody else, that's what I got from people today, or this last week. Okay, all right. Let's go on to 6.1 um, food service report. Shannon. Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for having me. And I gave everybody just an update. So, thank you from our last report. Our big thing this year has been our mural and software program. Um, it has really it's been a fantastic system that we just keep working through. Our point of sale has been up and running. Uh, Mr. Jacobson has been fantastic with making sure that Synergy and Premier Edge are talking and going back and forth. So he has spent a lot of time um, with me just really making sure that that's all happening. Our online menus are up and going. Uh, if anybody has seen them, School Cafe uh, will the nurses can check card counts and calories, parents can do trays. Um, there's just a whole suite of options there. Um, we are still smoothing out one of the challenges for the Glendon site is our fifth through eighth have a different serving size on something versus our nine through 12. So we're really working on how are we going to have that look in that system. So uh, we, will, we will get that taken care of, but just figure through. Um, the big thing for our meals and our online menu is we have over 500 items that come into the kitchen and all of that had to be entered into a database so we've got that in there it's going great uh, our production records are now digital so that that makes it nice we can get rid of this paper and things getting lost um, and right now we're working through getting all of our inventory put in there so ultimately the system will be able to pull up orders and really rely on data and previous meals. We also have our online meal benefit application, our free reduced are paid. Um, of those that applied, 86% of applicants chose to do it online. So um, we did, we really got a good turnout on that and 14% um, paper copy. Um, our next big thing is farm to trade. This year, we partnered with 16 different farmers out of our community, spending just over $81,000 on local foods. And I listed all of our farmers that we have utilized and what we purchased through them. But the newest partnership that we have is with Evergreen Bakery, which is an Amish family owned licensed and inspected bakery out of Frazee, Minnesota. So I met with them last fall and we kind of talked um, the Amish. Um, they don't drive, they don't do phones, they don't do internet. So, you know, we really had to kind of pan out how this all would work, but they have a driver, the community has a driver that brings them once a week. Um, we do the orders ahead. So he, they have been coming in, they do our sweet breads, they do our loaf bread, they do our cookies, they do our cinnamon rolls, um, just more of our bakery. So that has allowed us to actually close out our bakery position because they have they're filling that gap for us. And when I thought about all of this, I was kind of like, ooh, how are we going to make sure that they keep coming? We don't want to start something and then it's not working. So uh, three weeks ago, I approached the Holly School District, Sandy over there, and I said, hey, what do you think about this? Um, and last Friday, they got their first order through them. So now we have the Amish coming to two districts. So hopefully we can just keep them reeled in. <laughs> so, <laughs> they've been fantastic to work work with so um, we went through we've done their nutrition and stuff um, it's a learning curve for them just as it is with us but they are super excited and when Andy Andy um, is his name when he came last week their 
he was so excited that they're going to break ground for a bigger bakery now. <laughs> You know, so, uh, somebody from the Amish community comes with the driver here. And he does. Oh, okay. yeah. So, you can yeah. hand him the orders and everything. Yeah. I was wondering so, how that would work then if you And there it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> On Tuesday, he, they can go make a call somewhere. So, there has been times. Um, and they're, they really want to expand. So, they're going to start growing some um, different fruits and vegetables for us to use during our summer feeding and into yeah. next, next fall. And they have talks going among their community. Uh, to see what, what can they do, can they do greenhouses, you know, what things can their community do um, to get, to help us more and which helps them. So I think that we're really going to make this a long-term working partnership. I, I think, and I'm sorry to interrupt Shannon, but well, let's just say this, the, what they are providing us, I've been eating a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... It's just fantastic. So the food, it's a quality, quality product. So that's the one thing. Um, and so to try to keep this relationship, I think, is is really neat. I think it's also a learning opportunity for our kids. Because mm -hmm. as Shanna has learned herself, this is this is how they operate. Mm -hmm. Which And there's different uh, um, ethnicities, there's different backgrounds. But I think just for our kids to learn a little bit about it, too, at some point, when he feels comfortable with like maybe sharing their, how they operate, would be cool too for our yeah. kids to really fully understand what's going on. Yeah, so. and, and they are fully licensed just as our kitchen would be licensed. They get inspected by the health department. Um, and so, you know, that's no so different from us. But one big difference is they use wood, they have wood fire ovens. So they don't have electricity, you know. So there, there's a lot of neat things going on there that I'm really excited to kind of bring together and, um, you know, really show that this can work across the board. So, um, on to the next, additional services. So when I think of nutrition services, I don't think of just a breakfast and a lunch service. I think of how can we support the district as a whole? You know, because when we come in and we support the district as a whole, we're really supporting our kids in the program. So some of the additional things that we have done this year is we did team meals and we provided 1,010 team meals for students that travel um, for the sports. We work with concessions to provide scotchers, salads, and sandwiches. Tracy has been fabulous to work with. Uh, we cooked and served for the daddy-daughter uh, daddy dance. Dilworth did the breakfast for homecoming, Santa um, for Christmas and Valentine's Day. And we are feeding the Rebel Kids Care kids on non-school days. And there too, Tracy and her team are, are just fabulous to work with over there. Carolyn is just, just a sweetheart. So, Summer feeding, we have been approved and our positions have been filled. I took a different approach to that this year and we divided them out as of June, July, and August. And I sent them out to my employees and I said, if you are interested in all three months or just one month, um, I had people come back and they said, you know what, I'll commit to June, I'll commit to July. So we've got them all filled, but it'll be a different person each month. So um, we got that. Breakfast and lunch. Participation. So last year I showed you from 2018 through 2023. Now when you look at 23 to 24, um, we have the highest participation this year that since 2000, since 2018. So this is our highest year. We're at 70% lunch participation and 34, 34.5% on breakfast. So we're doing really well. When you combine that out, as a daily average, 537 breakfast and 1,093 lunch. And when I look today for the whole year from the first day to now, we've done just over 79,000 breakfasts and over 162,000 lunches for our kids. So kudos to the, the staff that works really hard every day to make that possible. So 24 and 25 school year. Our big thing is going to be now completing our final step and combining our kitchens, we've really operated two very separate kitchens with four freezers and two chemical and paper. I mean, inventory has really been difficult to try and rein in when there's just two different operations. And then the thing we ran into too is Flamin operates so much more differently than Dilworth. Dilworth is more of a simple serve. Two fruits, two vegetables, one hot, one cold. Uh, but we, we had more labor over there than we had over here. So by really working this together, it's really made it efficient in balancing where our need is. Um, it's reducing our delivery costs. And ultimately, in the end, it's going to 
reduce how much inventory we're having on hold. When I, I was just thinking about this today, I haven't had to order a case of napkins since I've been here, and we're on our last case. So, <laughs> yes, so hallelujah, we're getting down there. So, um, <coughs> the word, so there's been, I've received a couple questions, you know, in regards to um, Linda's doing all the cooking for Dilworth. They are not doing all the cooking for Dilworth. Dilworth is still going to do their simple processes, their heat and serve, chicken nuggets, pizzas, fries, um, hot veggies. But the things that can be more critical, like your raw hamburgers, your hot dishes that have multiple steps, that's going to come out of here hot over there. We already got a bat fired up. What, what more is it to add another 80 pounds of taco meat in there? Now I'm, I'm simplifying this process and really controlling the critical foods out of here, shipping over there. This year we've, we've spent, uh, we sent special diets, the bakery items and the egg salads. Um, now that we have a warehouse person, we are sending our prime groceries, which is our main cash bond renter, chemical paper products, and we are now moved over to a homemade ranch. We've been testing it on and off throughout the school year, um, and now we're gonna make that official change over. Bread, milk, and produce will still be delivered to Dilworth. We don't get delivery fees, and when we have a van, it doesn't make sense for us to haul, you know, 40 cases of milk over there when we got a driver going right there. For the rest of the school year, produce will come out of Glendon only because we can't meet the minimum requirement that Vicks has going over there. So we're going to have it brought here, and then we will shift it over there. But next year, it will be over there, um, the milk, bread, and produce. Um, Alec Kurt. Glendon's, I call it the front of the house, is very much set up for two lines to come in and head out. There's really no room to um, put machines or put coolers or anything. So what we've done is we have two vending machines coming in. Um, they've been ordered. They're coming in in August. And what's really neat about these vending machines is they are compatible with our software system. So students can use their school lunch account. Um, with the hidden, um, there is an extra security step to make sure that Shannon doesn't get Chase's number and I go put it in there. Um, or they can use cash or credit. But all of our a la carte chips, snacks, drinks are going to be shifted out. What happens in the Glimming Group is there's drinks that are 5 through 8 can't have, but are 9 through 12 can have. We can put that on the back end and restrict that. So if Shannon's a sixth grader and goes over there and tries it, the machine won't bend it out. So um, it just takes more setup. What if they put their cash or card in there? Can they then buy it at that point? Well, probably, yeah. yeah they put that question. Out. Yeah. But through their numbers, no, they can't. Um, by allowing this, uh, the snacks and the drinks going out, this will free up some of that salad bar area that we have. So now we can expand that. And one thing that I get a lot of comments on is they want pre-made salads. They want more sandwiches. Then things can come in because where we're utilizing that cold space at is for drinks right now. We can shift that out and move these things in. So we can increase what we're offering um, at the limited site with that. If I can interject too, the other thing that we've heard a lot and met with Shannon about a lot this year is kids are hungry before practice before they get on their bus to go to games, uh, before they get on the bus to go home, some ride the bus for an hour. They can also stop here, punch it in and grab it before the game, before practice, before they ride home. So that's the other piece that's nice because they're always trying to think, where else can we get food instead of run up town quick, run back. And, sure. and this is something you guys will fill at the end of the day? So you, yeah, you, no. we control the inventory, we're not paying someone else. So no. Sounds like a... 100%, and what's really, so we're starting with these, but what we can yeah. build, if these are successful and yeah. move over really well, they, the same um, company, which is compatible with their software program, we can get ones that bend cold meals. So students can go over there and punch their number in and get a reimbursable meal for no charge out of this vending machine. So there's, there's room to grow into these, but I want to start here, make sure things yeah. work as they say they're supposed to, and then and then build on that. So oh, yeah, we, we got a lot of different options there. And they got it dipped out in the DGF yeah. stuff. So, so I included cool. a picture in there of that so you guys can see. Them are the floor models. They yes. come. There won't be a monster in the future. No, there won't. I said to the says, why do you put candy bars in there? <laughs> we can't have candy bars, but yeah, we'll have one for drink and then one for 
and they deliver them, Chase, they deliver them on site and put them in your spot. So, <laughs> like, I'm not going to get a phone call. Yeah. So, Wonderful. Yes, last and not least, um, over the last year, there's been a lot of talk about repacking leftovers and freezing them. And this year, I just I didn't get a chance to get to it. We, just focusing on some different things, but I have talked with um, Zoe and Dave, and we are signed up that starting next school year, we're going to do that. We're going to move forward. Um, last week, I uh, sent an email out and visited with the counselors. Uh, one of my big concerns is moving into this is how are we gonna protect the identity of the students? They're, they're not going to participate if they think that they've gotta come in the lunchroom. So the counselors are willing to uh, work with me and we will package them, we will hold them, we will have them in our freezer and the counselor is going to be the one that's going to come down and say I need five meals, here you go. There, the student has that relationship with them and then we can protect their identity because it's not a matter of, it's just a matter of who can utilize it, who, can, who needs it and we don't always know that need. So, we did that um, with you, Lynn, and it was very successful, and a lot of the families were very grateful that they had that, especially going into the community where food insecurities pile up much quicker. Yeah, and I, and I think a lot of times that, um, you know, a lot of people think, well, it's for free and reduced, but there's that huge group in between that really falls in there at the end, um, you know, could, could use it just as much. Uh, and. One thing you know, with the kids is if they think that their friends are going to find out, they're not. They're just not going to do it. So that's why I really wanted to find a process that um, you know we don't need to know who needs it. Um, that's for the counselor to decide. You know, in those conversations. You know, yeah. So I'm excited to get that going next year. So, and then um, the rest of it is just what the vending machines look like. And then if you had any questions about the meal repack program and where. But they want to know where that's going. Have the benefit applications increased with the um, online application process? No, and that's because Minnesota is really awesome. I know. I was just hoping you know. <laughs> yeah. so, I, wish, you, I wish you were ready to call. Could we yeah. have something where we have like a computer up and ready for people to type it in that like back to school nights and conferences and stuff where we can say, you know, we really encourage you to do that. Here's it's available to I gave away Rebel Bucks, and, I know. and that was a lot. Well, it, it didn't help. Um, I don't know. What did they know? What did we do last? I don't remember. I'm sorry. No, I, think we're, I think right now we're sitting at 29.7, and last year we were at 32.1. So it's, it's changed. The majority of our um, uh, families that qualify come through the direct service through the state. So. Thank you for all your hard work. I know the parents at sitting at uh, games three nights a week are very thrilled with the changes, the options, and you work with Tracy, so thank you for doing that. Now now I've heard we have the nicest concessions to have in the HOL, and I'm not even ashamed to say that. Because so. <laughs> they got some Scotch rumors. <laughs> they were, I, I bought one every time. I shouldn't have bought one, but I did. <laughs> I saw someone walking through, through volleyball, they had like eight of them, and I'm like, wow. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, good. Not the 6.2 custodial maintenance report. Did you guys get one too? Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. Thank you guys for having me. Um, a lot that goes on in my department, so I kind of just sum, summarize it as best I could. Uh, for custodial, we've got a total of 14 custodial employees, 11 full-time, one student, two part-time. Uh, the student is actually planning on coming on full-time in the summer, so it'll be 15 full-time, or 12 full-time employees. Uh, summer cleaning, we're starting a plan for summer cleaning classroom by classroom, or I've been talking with the IT department and community ed and Rebel Kids Care, uh, just so we're not stepping on each other's toes and like going back in a room after cleaned it already, so we can just work together. Um, actually, one of our staff members came up with a summer cleaning, cleaning packet. We have a lot of new staff, so it's a flip thing and it makes it dumps it down. So 
everything is explained in there. Uh, I've been assessing our chemicals. Uh, we have a lot of chemicals that we use, and it's just too much. And so I'm going to get it down to four main chemicals just to save uh, time, money, and just easier to manage the inventory. Uh, along with the chemicals, I'm assessing our equipment. Some, some of the stuff we have we don't even use or we don't need. Items that we have our eyes on. Uh, I wrote down IMA. Uh, it it helps us clean uh, our bathrooms and a bunch of other things. Uh, again, that uh, staff member made a packet to bring it <laughs> in. <laughs> they did a nice formal yeah, presentation to me about the IMA, and I, and I get it. So we're just trying to figure out if we can yeah. make it work. But it's the bathroom of all. And just how this machine can okay. clean a bathroom. It just kind yeah, of. We brought it in. We needed it. Demo and everything. It was, it'll save time. Yeah. People save it. Yeah. Because it cleans. Well, well another the thing is, if there's a place you want to make sure that it's done right, and it isn't always, this machine makes it so Thanks. much more. Yeah, it's just, well, it does a better job, too, because it's just, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. He's twisting, and the, the get, yeah. And so the presentation was impressive, yeah. I would say that. That was pretty fun. Um, <laughs> it was not so it's kind of short and sweet with the custodial staff. They're always busy, and I appreciate all the stuff they do. They make this place run without them. We need a lot of trouble. Um, any questions from the custodial staff? Or? Maintenance. So since I hired on, uh, I've been able to take on a lot of the bigger projects, which leaves the staff more time to come some of the smaller stuff, like some of the plumbing, drywall, lights even, like some of the stuff was just pushed aside since we didn't have time, we had to deal with some of the bigger issues to staff, it was kind of hard, so they've been knocking out things left and right. Uh, we've been able to handle a lot more repairs in-house, which means less calls and payments to contractors, so we've had a lot less contractors coming in. Our boilers, uh, this year we got ahead of it and we had them serviced right away and gone through and everything. So this year we, knock on wood, didn't have very many issues at all with our boiler systems. And hopefully that's a big current thing. <laughs> HVAC, um, I know we had a lot of issues with our HVAC systems. I'm working on control, gaining more control uh, throughout our building. I know some spots we have great control and some are hot, some are cold. So I've just been slowly working on that uh, and then servicing them re more regularly. Uh, I've been revamping our preventative maintenance schedule, which is um, goes along with the servicing of our HVAC systems and our boilers and everything like that, just to make sure they last as long as they're supposed to last. Uh, Updating our lights to LEDs. Uh, if you look in our strategic plan, I've got a list of classrooms that we're replacing the LED lights in. We're actually using the LED lights from construction. So really it's just getting an electrician to come in and put them up. They haven't been helped so far. Uh, we have a new grounds position coming up, or not coming up now. Um, we're going to try to get students to home here the yard work. Uh, we got the application out there. I haven't had much luck with it quite yet, but see how it goes. If not, I got a plan B just in case. So summer projects, I only listed a few, but I've got so many in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're gonna be taking care of the grass, our football shed. Um, need some help. We've got pads out there that are eaten up by mice that are pretty expensive and it just needs some help. Uh, I know we got parking lots and signs and uh, the list goes on. Um, along with that, organizing our garages and uh, closets and storage rooms. I know we have a lot of leftover materials from construction. Our garage is packed full. I'm going to try to go through it, inventory it all, see what we can keep, see what we can get rid of. Or get back some money for, uh, or use up. Um, and we 
we started the reheat process in both schools. So that, again, with me being here, Brian's been able to actually sit down and start reheating and getting it to all the schools. Uh, our maintenance techs are hard workers and have been getting things done. I really enjoyed both of them because they the work that they do. Then the lab. Oh, do um, you have questions about the maintenance staff or anything like that? Um, director. I'd like to try to explain what I do in a day, but it changes in every every second. I come to the work with a plan and I walk through the door and I just go. So I just figured I'd list some of the things that I'm currently working in or involved in. Uh, obviously managing the custodial staff. I sometimes find myself having to do custodial work uh, if we're short a person or something like that. Uh, managing maintenance staff, same thing, along with not calling in uh, contractors. I've been doing a lot more of the fixes of our equipment in-house, so instead of sending our equipment in, I just order the part, we do it in here. And through that, the staff has been learning also, and so taking care of our equipment has been much better. And it shows, it makes them pay more care of it because then they have to do the work to fix it. <laughs> Our preventative maintenance schedule, like I said, I'm working on that and making sure it's implemented correctly. Uh, going over quotes uh, with the HVAC systems, whatever's wrong with those. We've been looking at getting new generators for the schools, ones that can handle the new additions. Our gym floors, refinishing those. Uh, a lot of our plumbing. I know in the Ford area, we have some issues with getting hot water here down at this end. Help desk tickets, I don't know if you guys know what help desk tickets are. Okay, so just going through those help desk tickets every day and assigning and making sure they're closed properly. And then sometimes I'm ending up doing some of them myself, depending on uh, what's needed with them. I, have, I got my boiler license in February, so I've been participating in boiler checks and I plan on just continuing getting the higher and higher classes in that boiler system, so we're supposed to be have the best they can get. <laughs> uh, checking on our HVAC systems, I'm constantly logged into our system, so I'm always looking at room temps, see, uh, looking for alarms, just out of the ordinary things. And when they come, just assessing them and fixing them right away if they need or have a plan to get those fixed. And some of the bigger ticket items I put in here just roof leak, or roofs, the new and old, so like leaks and what roofs we're going to replace or need replaced. Our grounds, again, that's just the finding a new position for taking care of the grounds. We've been working on a solar project. But Ideal energy. I don't know if Chairman's mentioned anything. Chairman said, I don't know much of anything when you're getting some of that heaven. So that's in the process. They're helping us write the grant and the money from the state. And Chase and I have met with them a few times. We didn't get accepted. And so it's a process. They're jumping through with the state, helping us. But uh, they'll be, they don't mount them on your roof. They set them with the weight so you, it doesn't do damage to your roof. It just sits there. And then um, they need to replace, they'll come and take them down. Yeah. Well, back up. It's all. Yeah, it's all part of the deal, and the state obviously is putting a lot of money towards this, so that's what they're accessing. Uh, and our payment is going to be like eight thousand, nine thousand dollars a year, and then we're supposed to be saving closer to forty some thousand, fifty thousand. So, and everybody that I've talked to as a superintendent that has it said, uh, "Yeah, we want to add more because it is paying for itself. It's not one of those deals where oh, it's supplemented and supplemented and pretty soon you're <laughs> paying for it. This is uh, everybody I've talked to has said." Great reports, and they're happy, and they want to add to us. So, yeah, so that's getting started for us. We are a part of the solar fields out in Felton, mm -hmm. so that affected us a little bit with what we can get because we already have some of that. But we still qualify, and we're just going to make it work. So, yeah. Um, and we recently had a water softener replacement in Linden. I didn't realize how much damage it was doing until we replaced it. Uh, I know the kitchen is very happy with the replacement. <laughs> yes. So, uh, also, I've been participating in the Cascade United School uh, response meetings. I'm 
trying to help developing and updating our emergency plans in PGF here. I know Val has been very appreciative of your assistance in that realm. I've heard lots of positive comments back and forth, seeing at the meetings and stuff. So. And I'm making, making them all, so. Um, and then I'm also leading the health and safety meetings when we have them. And then, uh, just like I said, the construction went over in the inventory. I feel like we should do something with that. Yeah, we have a lot of it next to the space. So. But yeah, any questions for me? No, oh, we do a lot. Thank you for everything. Yeah, I try to stop our cars every day. <laughs> Uh, the one thing I will say in the health district, it's uh, obviously that's a sore subject for a lot of people in the past because they would sit there and not always get checked out. Uh, the health district list is just about non-existent in the maintenance department now because they are getting knocked off and it's in a timely way. And if they are being knocked off, it's because they can't because they're waiting for a park or something. So I really appreciate it. I can't tell you how many people keep saying that, oh my God, we turned into the chase and they did it today. Or they did it in two days, it was done. So. Obviously, it makes the system run better, right? And so I just really appreciate that. And I've also been big on when we close out a ticket, adding a response to it instead of just closing it out because a lot of people like to hear responses like, well, what did he do or what did they do? But so for sure. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. On to 6.3 for committee reports, uh, budget report. Um, we don't we have, I don't want to spill your pen. You no, still it's that's okay. <laughs> so the budget report, um, don't have a whole lot to go over other than, you know, 2025 is going to be a tighter year. Um, 2024, 2025, school year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we're getting 2% uh, from the state. As opposed to this year, we're getting 4 And so, we're, uh, Chan's working with Marcus and um, working with trying to develop the budget. And right now, well, our, our budget for this year is going well, as you can see from your report your, uh, packet. I don't know if I. Yeah, I guess I said the one thing just for the public to know, too, and I shared that at um, my quarterly update. So it kind of just, it, you know, I don't want it to be all doom and gloom, but I also need it to be factual. So here's our enrollment, here's our dollars, here's what the state. Uh, one thing that uh, has been really out there that MREA, MSBA, and all these other groups, um, and, and, and MBE, has also showed that, like, this is our ring, or you can do it in graph, however you want to make your graph, but the funding, yes, was up 4% uh, for this year, 23-24, but the, but the, uh, the unassigned dollar amount was drastically re it was reduced and the restricted area went whoop, way up but that's kind of like we talked about we you don't have the freedom to always spend it on what you maybe need at DGF or at, you know whatever because it's limited or restricted and now in 25 it, it loosens that a little bit but it's still the problem is is the growth in the unassigned is 2% now this next year, and the other ones went up like over 100% increase. And it's just, yeah, unfortunately, we just asked, one of the things we asked our legislators is, give us the money that you were gonna give us, and then DGF will, with the board, elected officials will decide, hey, where should we spend that? And there's some good programs, don't get me wrong. I know there's some reasons why they passed some legislation, because it is needed. Yep, I get it. There are other places, there are other things that they're passing that. Mm -hmm. I think we could use it better somewhere else, right? So anyway, just want to make sure the public hears that too. We're doing as much as we can with what we have, but it's so restricted that it makes it difficult. When 80% of your budget is staff, um, you can't use that in the restricted dollars, so it makes it harder. So anyway. And for the public watching, um, if you know a kindergartner, ask them if they're enrolled. Yeah. Because our numbers are still, still really low. They're low on compared. Yeah. This time of year and other years, it's been much better. Yes. Much better. So, if you know anybody in the neighborhood, where are we sitting at right now? I think we're 65. And our current class is 130. 130 this year's kindergarten, 134, 130 right around there. So, there's some people obviously not registered yet. So, we just need them to. 
That's scary. We need to find those kindergartners. Yep. Hold a friend. Yep, hold a friend. Hold a friend, right. please. Yeah, that's a kindergartner. Any other questions on the budget report? Uh, personnel report, uh, we've been meeting with the MSEA, um, the paraprofessional custodial maintenance, and other folks in that group, um, kitchen staff, and uh, we're meeting after this meeting tonight. And hopefully we're gonna get closer. Uh, we're just about done with the language of the contract. Um, and now we're just trying to work through numbers. Our goals are still kind of the same as it relates to healthcare insurance, trying to bolster uh, benefits there, trying to get more participation in the healthcare insurance area so that we can get better rates and uh, better experience rating for our plan. That's pretty much all we can. All right, then 6.4, superintendent report. Uh, first one on there is business manager, um, talking with Marcus and Brady Marks. So uh, visit with him again today. He has Amanda coming tomorrow from Brady Marks. Those two are gonna kind of start to put together a plan. Um, Obviously, he's had some things happen in his life that he's working through as well, but Amanda's coming tomorrow. They're going to kind of map out uh, his timeline with Brady Marks and then when is it feasible for him to come on with us because he has other clients with Brady Marks that they also got up. So they're going to kind of navigate, try to set up a roadmap. Okay, are we talking June? Um, he thinks for sure by the end of the May, and so does Amanda, that they'll get it pretty down in. So then we can move in that direction. So we're working through what that contract might look like with him, and then he will have him full time for us, which would be great. Uh, MCA testing, it's just want to say that's going on. So uh, are, we have one preliminary, it's all I have so far is fourth grade reading, and we had 46, 46 fourth graders that improved. That they were, they said it's the biggest growth they've ever seen in any, uh, and that's the only one we got a snapshot on, so it was really cool. Uh, that either they were meeting, now they exceed, they partially met, now they meet, or they didn't meet, they partially meet. So uh, it was great to see, so that was, Really exciting. The rest have either stayed, you know, where they were, so they met. They still meet, but 46 of the 130 did so. Just an awesome thing. Robotics. We already kind of talked about that, so that's good news there. And congrats to them again on a great season. Uh, resolution, and that was just all these things that we started talking about with the co-op, and just having to make sure that we do this because we have this May 1st date for the contract. So I just wanted to make sure. There's a lot of action items that were added tonight that people will hear. Uh, we met with those people today and had conversations with them so they know what's happening tonight. I think that's very important that, uh, that we met with them and we did so that they understood why we're doing what we're doing for the contract. So, good. Questions for me? Just trying to keep us moving. All right, very good. Uh, let's go on to 7.1. Uh, this is for a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes from April 8th, 2004. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Nicole. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Lindsay. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to uh, the consent agenda. Um, claims and accounts. Bills for 2024, April 2024. In the amount of All right, ready? One million one hundred and fifty-four thousand eight hundred and eighty-seven dollars and thirty cents. Um, that, actually, I want to explain this a little bit. So, way different. So, normally, Brittany would have said something like three hundred and eleven thousand five hundred and twenty-five and sixty-four cents. Uh, Marcus, remember, has been out, and Amanda did these, and Amanda does all the wire transfers she added into this for all the payroll stuff, which you guys don't typically see that in the bills. Sure. So that's why, because <laughs> I was going, what's going on? I don't see this. And here was all the wire transfers, and I went, oh, okay, I feel better. So then it was back to 311, like we typically uh -huh. say. So Amanda has done it this way in her past, so she thought that's how we did it. So. Okay. Yes. We do spend uh, quite a bit of money on salary. We do. Yeah. So. 80% of our budget. Uh, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, so you've got to kind of really get that real number, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. The yeah. treasurer's monthly budget reports in your kit. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Oh. Motion by Brittany. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Nicole. 
Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to ninth, moving on to finish business, 9.1 policies. This is for the second reading of the uh, following policies we talked about last time. Veterans preference 405, 406 public and private personal data, 407 employee right to no exposure to hazardous substance, 408 subpoena of school district employees, 409 employee publications, instructional materials, inventions, and creations, 412 expense reimbursement, 414 mandated reporting of child neglect and physical or sexual abuse, 415 mandated reporting of maltreatment of vulnerable adults, 416 drugs and alcohol testing. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Lindsay. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Brittany. Any questions or discussions? We talked a little bit about this, but these are generally card variety changes, mostly dates. Yep. Um, more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 9.2 uh, continuing contract status. This is a motion. Um, to approve the list of certified staff members who have now attained continuing contract status. And if you see in your report packet, there's a list of um, people that are on their third year. Some folks are in second year, and those are those that have had three consecutive years in Minnesota school districts uh, or other state. It's just one individual, and then continuing contract for um, first years and those that are in the newly obtained tier four license. So do I have a motion? Second. Motion by Nicole, do I have a second? Second. Oh, second by Brittany. <laughs> but my ears are bad, so. Um, any questions or discussion on that? In those groups. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 9.3. This is uh, to approve the contract for Nancy Oster as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Nancy. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Nicole. Any questions or discussions? Discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. All right, this is 9.4. This is a resolution um, authorizing the admission of member district to the Lake Agassiz Education Cooperative. Uh, do I have a motion? Do I read the resolution first? Um, you're, you can get a motion and a second. Okay. I'll read it. I'll, All right. I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion. All right, let's see, make a motion. I'll I'll second. 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 Here's the resolution. Whereas is in here. <laughs> Resolution authorizing addition of member district Lake Agency Education Cooperative. Whereas the joint powers agreement superseding the previous joint powers agreement dated July 1st, 1999, was entered in, into on September 18, 2018, between the following Minnesota Independent School Districts. Member districts Independent School District number 146 of Barnesville, Independent School District number 150 of Holly, Independent School District 914 of Gilead, Independent School District number 2889 of Lake Park, Ottawa, and Independent School District. 215 of Norman County East establishing a joint powers education cooperative to be known as Lake Agency Education Cooperative and Joint Powers Education Cooperative Board. Whereas the joint powers agreement for the construction and maintenance of cooperative facilities was entered into on June 15, 2020, incorporating and restating the joint powers agreement dated September 18, 2018, between Lake Agassiz Education Cooperative and the member districts establishing a framework to finance the acquisition of real property and the construction, renovation, betterment, and equipping of a new education facility project building. And whereas the Joint Powers Agreement dated September 18, 2018, allows for the addition of member districts upon the application of cooperative board and subscription to the Joint Powers Agreement, the unanimous, unanimous consent of the current member districts, and whereas the district that applies to become a member district shall also agree to pay the cooperative rate of cost of the real and personal property owned by the corporate, the cost of which, or portion thereof, has been assessed against each of the member districts. So the executive director will calculate this amount from the records he or she has been charged to maintain. The cooperative district board may then determine the just and proportionate share to be assessed. And, whereas on April 9, 2024, Dilworth from the Felton Public Schools made an application request to become a member of the Lake ABC Education Cooperative, and whereas on April 10, 2024, at the regular meeting of the cooperative 
Board reviewed the application from Newark Fund Delaware Public Schools to become a member district. Whereas the cooperative board recommends that <coughs> Dilworth Glenfeld Schools be approved as a member district contingent upon the Dilworth Glenfeld Public Schools subscription and agreement in terms of the joint powers agreement, joint powers agreement for construction, maintenance, and cooperative facilities. And whereas the cooperative board has determined that existing member districts have paid for three of the 15 years for the project building pursuant to the joint powers agreement for the construction and maintenance of co cooperative facilities, the cooperative board and the member districts have agreed that upon joining the cooperative, Dilworth Glenfeld will not be required to reimburse the member districts in lump sum payments for the member districts prior contributions to the project building pursuant to the joint powers agreement for the construction and maintenance of cooperative facilities. Instead, in the event that the project building is sold in Dilworth Glenfeld as a member of the cooperative at the time of sale, Dilworth Glenfeld agrees to reimburse the member districts for Dilworth Glenfeld's pro rata share of the fixed allotment allocation and proportion to allocation is set forth in the joint powers agreement for the construction and maintenance of cooperative facilities. The time period Dilworth Glenfeld was not a member of the cooperative out of the purchase price of the sale of the project building. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the cooperative board recommends that Dilworth Glenfeld be approved as member district and Dilworth Glenfeld subscribes and agrees to, sub to be subject to and follow the terms of the joint powers agreement dated September 18, 2018, and the joint powers agreement for the construction and maintenance of cooperative facilities agreement upon signing the resolution. Upon joining the cooperative, Dilworth Glenfeld will not be required to reimburse the member districts and lump sum payments for the member districts prior contributions to the project building pursuant to the joint powers agreement for the construction and maintenance of cooperative facilities. Instead, in the event that the project building is sold and Dilworth Glenfeld is a member of the cooperative at the time of the sale, Dilworth Glenfeld agrees to reimburse the member districts for Dilworth Glenfeld's pro rata share of the fixed allocation proportion allocation as set forth in the joint powers agreement for the construction and maintenance of cooperative facilities. For the time period, Dilworth Glenfeld was not a member of the cooperative out of the purchase price of the sale of the project building. Upon member districts' unanimous consent and signatures below, Dilworth Glenfeld shall become a member district of the cooperative, and this resolution shall be attached to and incorporated into the respective joint powers agreements. This resolution may be exercised multiple counterparts, each of which, when so executed, shall be deemed to be an original, and all of which, taken together, shall constitute one and the same. The resolution may be executed by electronic signature. Okay, um, so it is a resolution <laughs> here. Yeah. Um, so we'll take a roll call. Brittany? No. no. Nicole? Aye. Me? Aye. Aye. Or no, Shannon? Looking at you. Lindsay? Yeah, that's all right. Aye. Aye. <laughs> now I'm voting. Yes. <laughs> um, the motion for the resolution, uh, the resolution passes. So, I wonder if we shouldn't. Do you want to? Can you, you run, down, run down, down there? Or do you have somebody on your phone you can call? Somebody taking votes? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you, Brooke. Should I give this time? Uh, as soon as we can. As soon as we're done, yeah. Well, I think. They're not the same. Well, there's several. There's some that are the same. Any that are the same, I guess that you could. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go with that. Did you just list the names? Yeah, and then, then read the, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. yeah, there's three ULA and then there's, well, I should look at them. And then there's three non renewals so you could just read one of those three. That you decided, David, how you <laughs> So that makes sense. We'll try to be as efficient as we well, yeah, there's, here. we can yeah. pair some of them. Right. I mean, there's still four or five. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So we'll move on to 9.5. This is um, a resolu resolution reducing and discontinuing educational programs and positions. Um, do, I have a, do I have a motion? So, a motion by Nicole. Yes, second. All right, so we have several resolutions. Um, this one's number six. Form six, form number six. Resolution, resolution reducing and discontinuing educational programs and positions. Uh, Nicole, we only introduced the following resolution and moved its adoption. Whereas the school board of independent district number 2164 adopted a resolution on February 12, 2024, directing the administration to make recommendations regarding the reduction and or discontinuation of programs.
programs and positions and or a set of recommendations have been received and considered by the school board. Be it resolved by the school board of independent district number 2164 as follows. That the following programs and positions or portions thereof will be discontinued. Part C, early childhood special ed education. Part B, early childhood special education. Uh, number three, early childhood special education speech language pathologist. Number four, school psychologist. Number five, occupational therapist. Uh, all right, I think that's all we have. Any questions or discussions on the resolution? I feel like, for personally, can I just clarify now that the, it's passed and I, I feel like when I vote for this, it only makes sense to not have these if we're part of the co-op. Like, well, yeah. you know what I mean? If yeah. we're dissolving or joining the co-op, dissolving these positions into I wouldn't have done it otherwise. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm kind sure. of torn, but. Yes. No, yeah, no, it makes sense, Brendan, for sure. They totally yep. understand. Yep. Given the previous order here. Yes. This yes. makes sense. Okay, correct. Thank you. So this is now what you get you're dealing with. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because this is different. Yeah. 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 For sure. Um, any other questions or discussions? Okay. Um, resolutions. What was the roll call? Brittany? Aye. Nicole? Aye. David? Aye. Lindsay? Aye. Resolution passes. Uh, 9.6. Uh, this is for um, the resolution proposing placement of a continuing contract slash tenured teacher on unrequested leaves of absence. All right. Let's see. Is that, is that so these three are all the same. Michelle Gilbert. 
once again, it's on the same grounds, discontinuance of the position. Um, any questions or discussions? Hearing none, this is a resolution to the roll call. Uh, Rick? Aye. Nicole? Aye. David? Aye. Aye. Lucy? <laughs> Very efficient. Um, resolution 9.9. This is also a resolution. Non renewing of a probationary teacher. Um, and this is. Any questions, discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. 